Welcome back to DIY Net. I wanted to quickly show you how to use these things. These are solderless, um, they're solder seal wire connectors. And uh, instead of trying to solder two wires together by holding the solder and the torch and the soldering iron and all that business, um, these make things a little easier. So let me show you how these work. I make these in various sizes. This uh, particular set was. Um, goes from 26 wire gauge down to 10 and you, there's four different sizes in there depending on what type of wires you're putting together. So how that works is there's a shrink tubing with a piece of a ring of solder in the middle of it and you put your conductors in both ends, you strip the ends and slide them in there with the strip part inside that solder ring, you heat this up and that will uh, um, melt the solder and make it join and seal the ends of the wire. So let's see how that works. Right. I tried doing this with a um, one of these lighters and it wasn't hot enough to make the uh, connection. So you either need, they recommend using a heat gun, but I am using a, uh, a small torch to do this. So let me show you uh, how that looks. I've got the uh, return piece on there so that it uh, wraps the uh, heat around the wire and gives you a more even, uh, more even um, heat. So let's see if we can Thing light. So you just slide the piece in there. And you will eventually see the solder melt. Alright, it's shrinking the tubing right now. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this on camera. I don't want to get too close to the camera and damage it. Okay, so the shrinking, the tube has shrunk. Solder has not melted yet. We are waiting for something to happen here. Okay, I think the solder is about ready to flow. You'll see it creep out in between the wires and that's what it's doing right now. I really can't show that too well on camera. But the solder has flowed out in between the wires. So that should be a good join. And then you just uh, Go to the ends of, of the uh, heat shrink tube and shrink that up and shrink that up a little bit, and that should give you a watertight seal. So um, that's is that going to focus that close? Let's see, maybe not. Um, I don't know whether you can see that on camera. I really need a better lens to do these kind of things with, but um, it the solder has flowed between the. Um, between the two conductors there and soldered them together. So that's a good electrical joint. That has cooled off a bit. I don't know if you can see. Sorry about not being able to get closer. This lens is not good for close-ups. I need to get some better lenses. Um, but um, I don't know how well you can see it, but the solder has melted. The ends are sealed and if you give it a pull, you can see it's it's made a good mechanical connection there. Normally, when you make a solder joint, you're going to have to hold the wires, the coil of solder which you're sticking in there, and the soldering iron or torch. So you need three hands, but doing it this way, you only need two. So these things are quite handy, and it's it's good if you're doing any kind of electrical work. It's good to have some of these laying around uh, for situations that come up. For example. Uh, I got some extension cords here that I uh, got cut by accident. I'm going to use this to fix them. Um, even though this is sealed up on the ends, I think I would still wrap some electrical tape around here if there's any possibility of, of water getting into it. But um, if it's inside an enclosure or something like that, this should be more than sufficient to uh, um, to make the join. Appreciate you watching and subscribing as always, and uh, you please take care of yourself. Thank you.